Well, we knew that our time in Fort McMurray was, it was feeling like it was coming to an end. Out of the blue, this property popped up on the market. My wife was in the area and she went for a visit and uh, I'm back in Fort McMurray and my phone starts blowing up immediately. Oh my God, it's a half a block from the art store. It's blah, 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 blah. We dropped everything. She came back to McMurray. We flew down together. It was all the, the check boxes. It was everything we were looking for, uh, both personally and professionally. And as you can tell from the space, it has allowed me to triple, if not quadruple, the space that I had in Fort McMurray. And the good Lord was looking out for us because uh, had we not moved from Fort McMurray, everything would have been lost. In the well, there's no question in my mind that I am where I am today because of Fort McMurray. This art career was unexpected. It was not planned. It just happened organically because people in Fort McMurray saw something and they were excited. And what I was doing, they started buying stuff. People like you started inviting me to big events to do really innovative things like painting Dr. Carl Clark or, or Ralph Klein or the Frankenstein monster in Pickett. <laughs> it just sort of started steamrolling all because of Fort McMurray and the people there. And they still support me. I'm down in Okotoks, but I still have a tremendous amount of clients in Fort McMurray. And so whenever I get an ask from Fort McMurray in terms of supporting a charitable cause, well, I'm jumping all over it because I have deep fondness for the community and I always will. I have always had a deep uh, admiration for people that work in energy and gas, particularly in the oil sands uh, region of Alberta. The dedication, the innovation, the focus on environmental protection, despite the challenges of trying to eat oil out of the sand, they do some amazing things. I've always been proud of, of the work that happens in Fort McMurray. I've never worked in oil and gas myself, but having worked with the United Way and with Keanu College, our connections to the industry are, are significant. And the generosity of the people in terms of building community, you know, we've always had a challenge up in Fort McMurray of brand. How do people understand the community as a place to raise a family? I was served for a period of time on municipal council and I was passionate about telling the story that this is a great family community and we raised our family there. And I gotta tell you, one of the hardest things about moving south here was how our sons, they were deeply connected to Fort McMurray, uh, particularly our younger son. That was a tough move for him. I paint, uh, paint some more. <laughs> <laughs> one of the advantages of living in Southern Alberta and in Okotoks particularly, is that we're in that magic spot between the prairies and the mountains. So we're 45 minutes away from hundreds of walking trails in the, foothills and in the Rocky Mountains. We love to get out in nature. For me, it was Peter Frampton who said, in order to have great output, you've got to make time for good input. And for me, my input is when we get to go walking in the, in the mountains, I go out with a camera and I take pictures and a lot of those pictures end up being in uh, paintings. So that's uh, number one is just being out in nature. It's, it's just awesome. Other things for fun, gosh, that's a hard question. Besides watching Netflix. <laughs> I often say I'm blessed to do something that when I get time off, I, I pick up a, a canvas and start painting. I really love to paint. It's not something that I spend time up here doing. It's I just spend time in my heart. And because of that, it's what I truly enjoy doing. And when I need to calm down and relax, I paint. So that's gotta be the answer. Okotoks is pretty cool in terms of a lot of the small businesses, particularly in about a three block radius around Birdsong Studio, there are some really cool family run restaurants, and shops, and bookstores, nothing against the big city, but it doesn't have that frenetic quality of a big city. It sort of feels like a town. And for me, because I come from a small town, I'm happy to be living in a small town. It feels like that. Oh, my back door is, is a big hill where the deers roam. Out the front is a small town vibe. It's perfect. Well, I think one of the unique things about our art business is that we kind of ship 95% of what we sell. That's not normal. My client base is across Canada and some people prefer original work. Some people prefer or only can afford uh, reproductions. But how we connect with people is through Facebook and Instagram, to be honest. 
it's rare that a sale comes through a website. It's, it's mostly the interconnectivity in social media. And because of the, what I call the community of people that support me and it being so large, I've been blessed with what I call super fans. There are a lot of people that don't have one, two, three, or four of my works. They have 10 to 20. One gentleman in Fort McMurray, David, has about 60 or 70 pieces. It's those people that have really been fundamental to our business. People like you that have invited me to do really innovative things. Marty Giles was an early guy. Sandy Bowman was one of my very early adopters. But really it's one-to-one. -one. People reach out, they reach out to me every which way. Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook. I just joined TikTok. That's how people connect with me and that's how we make sales. Well, I painted Darby Allen right shortly after we had evacuated to Calgary. And to be honest, up to that point, I, I felt like I'd never paint again. I was so disoriented. But my sister suggested that I should probably paint the fire chief. It'd be a good thing to do. So I did. And I, I posted that night, went to bed and woke up the next morning and it had gone crazy. It was 750,000 views and all of a sudden the networks are calling and I was on the national news. I share with everybody that wants to listen that that was a major shift in my art career. People that didn't know me from Adam all of a sudden knew who I was. It inspired a tremendous amount of business. How did it feel? It, it was surprising. It was like a roller coaster ride. But being a marketing communications person, a professional of many years, I sensed an opportunity to both tell Fort McMurray's story and to tell my story at the same time and to both work really well together. And that painting and various others that I did shortly after that raised a lot of money to help Fort McMurray recover from the fire. I mean, it was a devastating event for so many families to have been a small part of trying to galvanize support from across the country. It, was, it felt really good. I'm always honored when people reach out in times of duress to ask me to paint someone or something special. Every time is unique. My job as the artist, in my view, is to honor the subject, no matter what the subject or who the subject is, and I do my best to do that. I don't get too involved in the story or the circumstance, because that can be overwhelming. And there's been so many stories of families that have been deeply touched, and I just feel honored to have been asked into that very precious place at a time of loss. I don't shirk away from it. I, I love doing it because it's just a role that I can play to help and it's been an honor to do that. If I was to take a look at all those paintings and list the ones that got my heart racing, how many would there be? I don't really know. In terms of having a favorite, it does change from time to time, for sure. It's, it's hard. There's favorite stories, the ones that I tell to people that come in the space that are emotional and they just rise to the surface for me. I mean, painting B.B. King and having his spouse phone me out of the blue one day and because she just received a print of that painting and was weeping like a baby and we had a wonderful conversation. That's, that's the one that is really on top of the list, but there's so many. Well, this is where it all started for me in 2014 at the age of 47. I'd come out to the back alley, which was like a grass right away and noticed that a tagger, a graffiti person had tagged my shed and I instantly thought, I need to cover that up with something beautiful. And so I, I got a, some white paint and a roller and I rolled out a canvas eight feet high by five feet wide. And then I thought of Elsie. She was the first person that popped into my mind. And I had this picture that Joey Pudlovny had taken at some event. So I asked this permission if I could paint a portrait of Elsie. I didn't even own brushes. I had no paint. I, I went to a paint store and got a bunch of mist tints or off tints and bought some brushes and painted it and brought Elsie over. She was still alive at the time. I remember the day, it was it was a kind of a, an emotional day for her because it was the anniversary of her husband's passing on that particular day. But she was really touched. And we spent a lot of time together in the time that followed. And even on the day of her funeral, her family showed up at the house wanting to see it. So they knocked on the front door. I took them back. It was the middle of winter and they all wanted to get pictures with it. So it's a really special piece. 
And written into it were prayers from Elsie's prayer book. That she, she had two binders of, of prayers that she would often speak at Fort McMurray's major events. And she lent those to me. So she started everything. And then of course, Dorothy was next. Dorothy was our neighbor before she passed away in downtown Fort McMurray. And her husband, Rod, uh, allowed me to paint her portrait up here. She was Alberta's first female Indigenous chief. You asked about this gentleman. Morimoto Drive in Fort McMurray was named after Tom Morimoto's parents. Tom was an oil sands pioneer. He was the only Japanese Canadian soldier that landed on D-Day. He was a very short guy, but he had a grip. It was a solid grip and he was alive when I painted him as well. The other two small ones are Punch Dickens. Dickens Field is named after Punch Dickens. And this is Jim Dory, the gentleman that actually built this shop. And I'm convinced his spirit was the positive energy that it contained. Uh, he was a guy that worked at Sing Crew for many, many years. He was a singer, songwriter, a wonderful guy. Just go to our website, it's birdsongstudios.ca or reach out through any social media channel. I'm on all of them, even TikTok.